here we are at the end of the Book of Mosiah and the beginning of the Book of Alma in the Book of Mormon. This is a time of change as we're seeing the Nephites go from a time of being ruled by kings to being ruled by the judges. And it's so significant that when we get into Alma chapter 1, we're actually going to see a change in the way in which they keep the date. If you remember earlier, every time they reference dates, they said it's been this many years since we left Jerusalem, mm -hmm. since Lehi and Nephi and them left Jerusalem. Now we're going to start keeping time based on the judges. And so it's such a seismic shift in the Book of Mormon era. And uh, to better understand what's happening in Mosiah chapter 29 and Alma 1, we actually need to go back to 2 Nephi chapter 5. So if we go there... In 2 Nephi chapter 5, uh, verse 18, we're introduced to where the government or the system of governance that the Nephites had began. So 2 Nephi chapter 5, verse 18, it says, And it came to pass that they would that I should be their king, but I, Nephi, was desirous that they should have no king. Nevertheless, I did for them according to that which was in my power. And then if we go to Jacob chapter 1, we're going to get one other key piece of information that will help us understand what's happening in Mosiah 29. So in Jacob chapter 1, uh, verse 11 we read, wherefore the people were desirous to retain in remembrance his name, meaning Nephi, and whoso should reign in his stead were called by the people, second Nephi, third Nephi, and so forth, according to the reigns of the kings. And thus were they called by the people, let them be of whatever name they would. And so after Nephi passes, those who took up the kingship were called Nephi. But we get to Mosiah chapter 29 and we recognize that the king's name is not Nephi. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to be able to see how the influence of leadership is going to impact why that may be the case in the last chapter of Mosiah. <laughs>